Welcome to the Turning the Tide expansion. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the venturing Voyager, Moana. Moana specializes in two things, movement and ocean tiles. She can move good distances and several of her cards are dependent on how far she's come. But the only reason she specializes in movement is because of her relationship with the water. A rising tide lifts all boats, and that's certainly true for Moana's ocean tiles. When an oceanic character touches an ocean tile, they have the ability to go an extra space without using a movement. That means if, say, Moana or Ariel intend to move two spaces, but their first move was onto an ocean tile, they will still be able to go two additional spaces. Any other character that lands on these tiles treats them as if it's a normal space. This is helpful for Moana, but it's also useful for any oceanic allies you have on your team. Be careful though, because it can also help your opponent if they have oceanic characters as well. Here's their character card as we see it calls me. Let's start our journey by taking a look at Moana's character card. Like most characters, Moana can move two spaces, provide a hand size of two, and hit for two damage. Her health points stand at a low seven, and her victory points are a typical five. This means she's close to average as a target, but a bit frail. It compares pretty closely to Maleficent. Moana's dream is to sail across the sea. If there are two or fewer ocean tiles in the arena, Moana can place one in an adjacent space. This is their primary way of placing ocean tiles, and it's crucial for making her effects work. Be mindful of where and when you place those tiles in order to set up your oceanic characters. Moana truly is a master wayfinder. Whenever you place an ocean tile, you can look at the top two cards in your deck and place them on the top or bottom of that deck. This is a bit situational, but still useful. If Moana is followed by an ally like Ariel, Gaston, Facilier, or Mickey, whose skills or brooms can be dependent on the next card shown, you can shift the odds in your favor by placing the appropriate card in the next spot. It's not as flashy as gaining stealth or doing damage, but any advantage helps. So let's go through Moana's cards and break it down a little further. I'll be going from most common to least common, as some cards in the deck appear multiple times. Moana's coming for you with her ore strike. It appears three times. It does three damage to an adjacent rival, but if she's moved four or more spaces during her turn, it does four damage instead. It usually takes an ocean tile from before to build up to this, but it can certainly hurt if you have the tiles to give. That said, it's perfectly fine to use this to boost a standard attack for herself or for someone else. The Heart of Tafiti guides Moana across the board. There are two copies. It provides an ocean tile if there are fewer than three out there already. Then it allows Moana to move up to three spaces. This is good for setting up the ore strike on the same turn, but it's also one of the times that you can place two ocean tiles in one turn. It's also a strong movement from the back edges to get immediately to the center of the board. Catch your opponent off guard if you can hit them with this and a surprise attack from far away, or even a KO. If there's one thing we know, it's that she's been chosen by the ocean. With one tile, she does three damage to an adjacent rival. With two tiles, she also recovers two HP. And if there's three tiles, then she gains a VP. This is a potentially powerful card if you can resist the temptation of using the ocean tiles early and protect them from any other oceanic characters. Take a good look at the situation and evaluate the card's usefulness accordingly. Crashing Wave, not to be confused with Ariel's Driving Waves, can provide an ocean tile. Then, each ocean tile deals one damage to every rival on or next to it. It's the second card in a row that benefits from having multiple ocean tiles out and available. It turns the ocean against your rivals, but to plant the ocean tiles, make sure that your opponent can't take them out with their own characters. Moana can guide her allies as long as we know the way. This card moves one ally to an unoccupied space adjacent to an ocean tile. This is useful for anything from getting an ally out of danger to planting them on top of a VP space right before their turn. She's always done her best work beyond the reef. It's a movement and action card that allows her to move up to one space. Then an adjacent rival is dealt one damage for each space that she's moved this turn. There are a number of ways to use this card, but it's potentially her most damaging combo. As an action card, 
She can do up to seven damage if using the Heart of Tafiti with three ocean tiles. It could also do four damage on a movement phase while setting up an action phase. Still, be aware that you'll likely want to deplete your ocean tiles with this, so save it for the big chance to do damage. Kind of like an oceanic magical mob. When all else fails, there's always Grandma Tala's guidance. With it, you move three spaces, then recover one health for each ocean tile on the board. This means healing zero to three health. Besides Chosen by the Ocean, it's her only opportunity to heal. So, use it when you have at least two of the tiles available. Now that we've explored Moana's deck, where does that leave us? Moana has versatile potential thanks to her cards and tiles, but can come across as frail the first time you use her. She has low health and is worth 5 VP. If you have hazardly use up her tiles, you'll feel like she doesn't do anything particularly well. Her value really comes from either playing her own game with the tiles or in tandem with other oceanic characters. Honestly, I'd sum her up as a Jill of all trades, but a master of none, except water. She can fairly hard in certain circumstances and can move far when she needs to, but everything has a cost. She may not have Demona's complete versatility, but she tends to do better versus to single targets. Let's talk for a moment about ocean tiles in case you haven't gotten enough of them yet. Moana can place one of them each turn with her skill. She also has three cards in her deck that can provide a tile. If the average game goes three or four rounds, that means you're likely going to get three to six opportunities a game to place one. Beyond the Reef and Ore Strike are the cards that gain the full benefit from using up ocean tiles. In the meantime, Grandma Tala, Oak Crash and Wave, and Chosen by the Ocean benefit the most from having all three ocean tiles out. To me, this provides a bit of a roadmap on how and when to best use your cards. Ocean tiles are her resources, and in order to get the most out of them, you have to plan ahead. Sure, it's nice to have a free third movement, but try to save them for when you have a good KO chance or a great turn beyond the reef. Finally, let's talk about the Elephant Seal in the room. Oceanic characters are some of Moana's best allies, but they're also her biggest weakness. If your opponent has one or two other Oceanic characters, like Stitch or Davy, then they can use your Oceanic tiles against you in order to increase their own movement. I'd go so far as to say that if your opponent drafts Moana, consider drafting an Oceanic character as a counter pick to cut her short. That being said, Moana can be a lot of fun to play. Her design is very on brand, and the, as the ocean is her friend. Just know that she can be countered by an experienced player. Her strengths lie in her mobility in that she can explore the board and move quickly. She can provide support to each of her oceanic allies. She can heal, gain VP, hit hard, and do multiple things in the same turn. As for her weaknesses, she has low health given her 5 VP with few defensive options outside of movement. Going up against one or two oceanic rivals can shut down her tile plans and use them for her own. And she's fully dependent on her oceanic tiles because just like Mickey, she lives and dies by her mechanics. Moana's hard to place from a team standpoint. The instinct is to put her with all oceanic characters, but there comes a cost with most of those. For example, Moana doesn't want to be cursed by Davy, and she shares gears with Ariel. Still, it can be helpful to bring someone along so that the opponent doesn't counterpick you with all water characters. If you're looking for characters to pair her with, though, here are a few options. Moana, Davy Jones, Ariel. This team is actually a water team, and despite what I just said about Davy Jones and Moana, Ariel does a decent job of managing Davy's curse. The other thing that happens is Davy, as a 7 VP target, takes some pressure off of Moana. Each character on the team can take advantage of the Oceanic tiles. Each character has a method of healing available to them, which can really disrupt the opponent's offense. Just understand that you're unlikely to upgrade Ariel and Moana on the same game. In that case, you're almost always going to lean towards upgrading Ariel with this particular team. But that being said, you'll have multiple opportunities to upgrade Davy. Maleficent, Gaston, and Moana. This team is not based on an oceanic theme, but it takes advantage of movement manipulation and damage. Maleficent can do fair damage to multiple rivals, leaving them vulnerable for Moana and Gaston to clean up. Every character has a different gear setup, which gives you a chance to, for multiple upgrades. But be careful because this team is slightly weak to status effects, but not completely helpless. 
So that's our breakdown of Moana. Thanks for joining us. Make sure to stick around for our next one. But until then, I've delivered us to where we are. I have journeyed farther. I am everything I've learned and more. Still, it calls me. See you next time.